All right, so I've talked a little bit about our materials and I've talked a little bit about the process of picking something to paint and some of the elements that can help you end up with a more, uh, a stronger painting. So we're actually gonna get into the, the process right now. And again, this is one process of a million out there. If you like it, great. If you don't, find something else. But one of the things that I think is uh, maybe a little bit unique about this is its simplicity, its versatility, and um, that it can work for somebody who's never painted before or somebody who's um, pretty comfortable with painting. It can just be a, a different stepping off point into making a painting. This is the, the Cheap Joe's Prime Really Good Canvas. We're painting on an easel. I think this process lends itself to an easel and it's nice to have a sturdy, um, sturdy place to work. I'm getting the canvas wet with a spray bottle. We like to paint wet. And then we have a, a blank canvas here and maybe Maybe we find that a little in intimidating, but we're going to, so we're just going to attack the canvas right out of the chute, just so we're showing it who's boss. I'm using this big, fat, Cheap Joe's workhorse brush. I'm throwing the Windsor Newton Burnt Sienna. Again, the reason I like this, the Windsor Newton Burton Sienna is because it's so warm. I use golden paints otherwise, but the golden burnt sienna I find a little dead, a little on more toward the blue end of the spectrum. And we like this really warm, almost kind of orangey color underneath, and it's going to show through and give a lot of interest to the painting. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this right now, but I'll paint the sides too in case this, this doesn't end up in a frame. And it's just hung right on the wall. I like to paint the sides a dark color and it's, easy if that, it's easier if that underpainting is already on there. Okay. So this is just exercising our arm, getting the paint on the canvas. It's really nothing more than that. It gives us a, an interesting surface to paint on. Keep it loose, make it drip, don't make it drip, whatever you want. We don't, we're not drawing. Um, we notice, obviously, we didn't, do, we didn't do any drawing of boots on our canvas. We're not into that. This is a simple process, even if somebody thinks, I can't draw. This should work for you. So we've picked this simple composition, strong shapes, and the, uh, our starting place then is going to be to just sort of identify and map out on this canvas our main shape or shapes. And really you can almost think of, of this as one big shape. We're, we're not really worried at this point that it's a pair of boots. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just the shape at this point. And so we're just roughly mapping it onto the canvas. I'm just using this towel just kind of, it's really just as a drawing tool at this point. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not going to get it just right. As you can see, like this line is way too far over there. Okay, fine. I just kind of redraw it here. And so this step, it's not even necessarily going to end up or show up in the, in the final painting. This is kind of, this is part of our eye just looking at what we're painting, getting used to seeing it, and starting to get it translated onto the canvas. I don't even want to say it like correctly, it just to where it fits and it matches with, with kind of the composition that we that we set out to paint. So that, I mean, that's the, the outline of the big shape on our canvas. And if you're not, if, if what you're painting doesn't lend itself to, to putting a big shape on the canvas in this way, 
then you probably ought to stop and think, hmm, it, it, am I going to end up with a painting that really has that, that strong sense of shape? So if you're, if you're struggling at this point, then you might want to look for something else to, to paint. While this tinted canvas is still kind of wet, we're going to keep drawing just a little bit by pulling some of the paint off the canvas on some of the, on some of the lighter spots. In this case, I'm not worried about anything other than the boots. You know, if this were a landscape or something, you know, a cityscape or figures or something, I would, I would probably, I would be more inclined to think about the everything that's in there that I'm going to put on my painting. But in this case, I'm really just painting a, a pair of boots, and we're gonna, we're gonna just play around with the, with the, with the background. We'll probably put it, put a horizon line and have it on a to where it looks like it's on a surface, but I'm not, I'm not worried about any of that detail or even what I'm going to do with that uh, at this point. I'm just looking at the boots. I'm going to pull off some of this paint here where it's lighter. The light is hitting the boots roughly there and there. You have some highlights here. If this looks somewhat ridiculous and you think, how is this going to end up as a final painting. That's good. That's part of the fun of it. There's a little bit of a little bit of magic to this process because you it does it, it tends to surprise you as you're working as you're working it and you think, is this really gonna turn into something? This feels like it's gonna be a, a ridiculous mess at the end of it. And maybe it is, but Maybe we're gonna get lucky, and it's gonna it's gonna surprise us and be a nice a nice painting. Again, right now because I'm pulling wet paint off and showing some of the 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 white canvas underneath, I'm looking at some of the lighter lighter elements in this um, in this photo. At this point, I'm going to add a little bit of I'm going to introduce some of our dark values. And I'm doing that with our ultramarine blue, and I'll, I'll put some more burnt sienna out. And notice I don't have black. I paint with black sometimes, but part of what's interesting about this process is that you don't have to. And with my, with my limited uh, color palette, I didn't even bring black. If we want to get a really dark value, I can just take this burnt sienna and mix the, the ultramarine blue, you get as dark on a value scale as you really need to for most of the time. I'm looking at for some of the darkest values, again, in, in these boots here. And I'm trying to, in my own mind, forget, forget that I'm painting a pair of boots and just thinking about the elements that Mm, that are going to go into this painting, meaning lights and darks, shape, that sort of thing. The more you can divorce in your mind from what it is you're painting, strangely, the, the, more, um, the more successful you'll be, and in the end, usually the more it looks like what you ended up painting. So, we're just going to put in some of these dark values And, and obviously, very quickly, it starts to establish the, the shapes and define the shapes a lot more strongly. And I'm not, I'm trying not to think about line here. Line is putting a pencil on there and drawing an outline and then, okay, you know, maybe you shade in. But we've got big brushes with paint on them. And so when I see this dark value on the side of the boot, I don't want to outline it and, and like I'm drawing and then shade it in. I'm just using my brush to get the whole thing in there. And see how it curves a little bit around here. You got that dark shadow that kind of comes under here. And we can do plenty of editing as we go along, but I'm trying not to worry 
about if I make a mistake or did I get it, did I get the shape just right? That will come together. And that's one of the great things about this process is we can edit as we go along and not have to worry about, oh my gosh, did I, did I draw this? Did I draw this to where it looks just right? Look, I just talked about not putting in lines and I just put in a line. Rules are meant to be broken, right? Okay. So, and notice too how I'm, I'm just I'm moving around, around the canvas. I'm not, I'm not getting stuck in any one spot because if I get stuck in any one spot, then I may think I'm doing great, but then the other parts aren't relating to it correctly. If you move around more on your canvas, then you're more likely to realize if, oh gosh, that, that shape isn't really supposed to, um, supposed to be there like that. And you can do a little editing more quickly. Just a quick thought, like as I'm looking at this, the, this boot here, notice how my stroke kind of mimics the, how the boot, I mean, the, mm, the shape of the boot goes like that, right? It's that surface. So my strokes kind of mimic that as I'm going that way. This doesn't necessarily look any less ridiculous, but you can start to see the shape coming through. And it's dripping and kind of messy, and that's great. This is not, this is not a way to paint if, if your goal is, I want to paint the, like some photorealistic boot. This is a way to paint if, if you love color and you love brushwork and you love smearing paint around on a canvas and playing with those elements and letting the image just be a, a vehicle for that and, and not so much. I mean, in the end, I think maybe somebody looks at this painting and maybe they identify with cowboy boots for some reason and that's part of why they like it but I also want to end up with a painting that somebody who doesn't really care about cowboy boots at all they like the the painter the painterly qualities in the painting that have nothing to do with the subject itself okay we're going to we're going to call this a little stopping place as we can see we've we kind of just have the the beginnings like if we're framing a house we kind of we have the foundation we've put up some studs and not a whole lot more than that and we've done that just with our burnt sienna and the ultramarine blue our next process is going to be and i, I don't i don't care whether this is wet dry that really is immaterial so the next thing we're going to do is is decide how much how much detail in this we'll call this a value study it's not looking at color it's looking at lights and darks and and using the using the shape as a framework to put these lights and darks on we're going to think about how much um, how much detail we want to put in that and that'll be sort of the, the next thing we do and you can you can put a lot you could spend a lot of time doing that you could spend a little time we're going to find that that happy little balance in there and and sort of demonstrate how with you know, a moderate amount of detail in our, uh, in our value study, how we'll finish with, with color on that and it'll come together real quick.